Hello, my name is Junior Ruiz and this is my final oral presentation for Liberal Arts Capstone. Today we're going to be talking about libraries and technology. Before we do that, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I am a communications major, finishing up my bachelor's degree. Very excited about that. I work in a public library. I have over 16 years uh, working in a public library. Half my life. Fun times. During my time working in a library, I've learned a lot of things. And throughout my academic career, I've selected courses of study that allow me to serve in my library more effectively. And without realizing it, I was doing something that all libraries do. And it's what inspired me to do this project. My capstone project is on libraries and technology, specifically how libraries use technology. What, what makes up a library, um, the perceptions of what a library is now, and how those perceptions have changed, the people that make up a library, the services that make up a library, the needs that those services address, and technologies that are used by libraries, and how those technologies mesh with the services provided. After everything's said and done, we will have a better idea of how have libraries incorporated new technologies into their services. Research for this project was interesting because I had to separate myself from the project. Sources such as EBSCOhost, American Library Association, as well as interviewing actual librarians fueled this project and provided the data to support the conclusions made. Throughout research, there was interesting topics that came up, how libraries have evolved to become these community centers, places where you don't go just to get a book, but you go to hang out for a program. You go to get out of the heat. There's lots of reasons to go to the library. No one right answer. The concept of social capital was also something I discovered throughout research. Social capital is defined as any kind of social relationship that can generate value. For example, the potential job growth that can come around from libraries offering resume proofreading services. Research also yielded a strong desire to innovate, to not fight against change, but to embrace it, broadening the general public's accessibility to information, developing new ways for patrons to get to information, access it, at no cost to the patron. Libraries have changed greatly over the years. But, what's the one thing you think about when you think of a library? Pretty sure it's books. But libraries are so much more than that. They've expanded to include a wide selection of materials and media and services that really make it so libraries have become community hubs. Community hubs are publicly accessible locations where all members of the community can gather. Libraries fit this mold perfectly in that they are open to the general public and they can take part in a wide variety of activities, services, and programs within their libraries. You don't need to be able to afford to have your own computer, to have your own personal collection of books. It is an institution where it exists for the public good. The American Library Association offers the following definition that includes public libraries should have at least an organized collection of printed or other library materials or a combination thereof, paid staff, an established schedule in which services of the staff are available to the public, the facilities necessary to support such a collection, staff, and schedule, and finally, it is supported in part or in whole with public funds. Similarly, Professor and Executive Director of the Center for the Study of Libraries, Denise Agosto, highlights key principles of libraries and states that first libraries meet society's information needs by acquiring the materials deemed valuable or useful to some or all the people. Second, they provide a physical location and an environment for storing and preserving those items. Third, libraries add value to the items acquired by organizing them in some manner to make access more efficient. And finally, the library's staff improves access by providing assistance to individuals and in locating desired information. She goes on to highlight that the concept of information in public libraries has taken an increasingly broader definition beyond just books, 
web-based tools, and other traditional information resources, leading to a wider array of library services. There's a focus on what the library does over what it just has. There's emphasis on digital forms and just having different formats for information. Data from the report Perception of Libraries and Information Resources suggests that many online information consumers can see a role for libraries beyond books. Information is seen as that expanded role for libraries by the largest number of their respondents. It's important to realize that libraries are not just books because libraries are increasingly moving towards viewing their communities as their core focus, not their collections. Many definitions of a library revolve around the fact that it is constantly changing. It's dynamic. It's going to continue to change and evolve. But who's working in libraries? What's a librarian? That's something that is constantly being redefined. Librarians are information professionals, first and foremost. They're more than just somebody that can recommend a book or tell you to be quiet in the stacks. Throughout research for this project, many resources shared a common theme in expressing that librarians were agents of change, actively creating the future instead of constantly reacting to it or, worse, resisting it. The role of a, the public librarian is becoming more fundamentally educational than ever before, painting them in a new light, such as digital literacy educators. While conducting research for this project, several South Jersey librarians were interviewed and they each provided um, a definition of what they felt a librarian was. There is also amongst their definitions a desire to assist patrons in developing their digital literacy skills. Miss Margiotti's definition uh, played a big part and was very valuable uh, in this project, especially highlighting that that they deal in facts, also uh, providing a sense of objectivity, proved to be a valuable resource. Let's go into detail into some services you might find at a library. One is English as a Second Language classes. Now, these English as a Second Language classes can help immigrants better adjust and assimilate to life in the United States. It helps onboard them into their community. It helps them learn through conversation and allows for them to engage with other members of their community that are in a similar situation with them when they're learning. We also have photocopying and printing. Now, you can get a lot of things off your phone, you can get a lot of things off your laptop, but I don't have a phone that can print out my W-2 when, I, when it comes for tax time. Libraries offer this valuable resource to communities for the teens that have to print out their project the night before for the adult that is going for a job interview and they need a copy of their resume. No matter how digital things become, this analog physical service is still highly sought after, but many libraries are incorporating new ways to facilitate it, such as wireless printing uh, and also allowing patrons to just bring in their materials on flash drives or access it via email. The physical space of a library is also something that should really be highlighted and noted. There have always been spaces devoted to sitting down and being able to read and look at materials, but now many libraries include access points for their wireless network and also outlets to charge your devices. Libraries take these into consideration when designing their spaces for the public because they know that the needs of their community is constantly changing. Computer access is incredibly vital in this day and age. Unfortunately, not everybody has a good enough cell phone or a laptop at home that in which they can use to get to the internet. Libraries provide that access with public computers for adults, public computers for teenagers, and for even young children. They allow people to get onto the internet, get onto computers, and familiarize themselves with this technology. Computer networks have evolved greatly. Librarians, in conjunction with IT professionals, have created strong 
technology infrastructures within their libraries that facilitate many of the new technologies that support their services, as well as improving existing ones, such as Wi-Fi and printing. A library's computer network can do many things. For staff, it gives them a place to store their work and access it from any workstation. It also gives them increased collaborative capabilities. For patrons, network computers allow for printing, they allow for increased file sharing, and also provide librarians with new ways to help patrons increase their digital literacy skills. There are some people that go to a library and they don't know how to do certain things on a computer. They may not know how to copy and paste, they may not know how to print, they may not know how to access their email, they may not know how to get an email. In recent years, librarians have had to do more of these tasks, helping patrons do these tasks when they come to the library. Public access to Wi-Fi is become essential. It's become expected in public libraries. With public Wi-Fi, you just bring any device in, a phone, a laptop, a game system, and you're able to access the internet. Percentages of library users make use of their library's internet. Percentage of people that use their library's Wi-Fi when the library is closed. Chances are you have a mobile phone. Mobile technology has constantly gotten cheaper and easier to access. There are a few ways that libraries make use of mobile technology. One is through text messaging. Through SMS communication, libraries can communicate with their patrons in very quick, concise ways that don't require a phone call or a letter to their house. The patron can find out when their books are due, when they're overdue, also if they have materials that are being held for them. And that works directly in line with a library's management software. Library management software is database management software specifically designed for libraries. It allows them to keep track of item records, it allows them to keep track of patron records, it allows them new ways to allow patrons to access digital materials such as ebooks and database articles. The materials tracking offered by library management software is revolutionary. It changed the game. No longer do you have to have the due date card that you stamp. Using barcodes, libraries scan materials. It assigns that barcode to a patron, lets them know when their materials due, and also allows, through the use of online catalogs, other patrons the opportunity to place those materials on hold. The library management software will keep track of those holds and notify staff when the materials returned that somebody was waiting for it and let the waiting patron know their material is there for them. Library management software will calculate everything from fines, it will keep track of circulation statistics, which are incredibly important for librarians. Circulation statistics help librarians decide how to build their collections. What things are going out? What isn't going out? What materials are being requested by our patrons? This also helps with budgeting. When attempting to justify a collection's development budget, it helps to have statistics justifying why you're getting specific items. There are also several multimedia tools used by libraries every day. Now, Microsoft Office has been a part of many PCs for a long time. Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, and Publisher have given librarians many different ways to create publicity, press releases, flyers, for their services and for their programs. With internet applications becoming more accessible, there are new, cheap, and easy to use tools that librarians can use. One such tool is Canva. Canva is a digital media tool where librarians can create graphics for their various needs, whether that be publicity for services, publicity for their programs, or publicity for their social media. Social media has become one of the most popular forms of mediated communication. Libraries have taken notice. Using platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, libraries can connect with their patrons in new ways. Each platform offers a different way to connect with their patrons. YouTube offers video uploading and hosting capabilities. Twitter offers for small, concise bits of text. Instagram 
offers more visual image-based sharing, and Facebook offers a mix of media. It gives them a two-way communication method where you can share content and through the use of likes and comments, hear from your patrons, getting feedback from your patrons, knowing what works and what doesn't work. It's just another way that libraries demonstrate that they are being responsive to the needs of their patrons. What are some concerns facing libraries? First of all, budgetary issues are a big topic amongst libraries. Due to outdated misconceptions, there are people that just think that we don't need libraries anymore. We have the internet. You have your phone. Why do you need a library? Librarians work hard to collect statistics to prove to these officials the return of an, on investment that their community receives. How much would a patron pay for these many books, for these services, for this technology access, but they get it for free at their local library? The relationship between publishers and libraries has been tense within the past few years. The American Library Association notes that copyright issues are among the most hotly contested issues in the legal and legislative world. Billions of dollars are at stake. Legal principles and technological capabilities are constantly challenging each other, and every outcome can directly affect the future of libraries. Due to the potential of digital materials being copied easier and distributed at the cost of publishers, there have been many publishers that are slower to go on board with allowing libraries to circulate their books. Publishers such as Macmillan Publishing, Penguin Publishing, and Simon & Schuster held out until 2014 before they started allowing public libraries to circulate uh, their ebooks in their collections. In conclusion, when we look over what we've discussed today, what libraries are, the roles of librarians, the services libraries offer to the public, the technologies that libraries use in those services, and the challenges that libraries face, we get a more modern outlook on libraries. Using the information we've discussed today, we're able to determine that libraries have evolved to adapt to modern times by using technology and incorporating it into many aspects of how they function. Looking at the information we've discussed today, we're able to determine that libraries are most likely going to continue to evolve and adapt and change as new technologies are introduced. The book on libraries is nowhere near done being written. The next chapter is currently being written by librarians that are innovative and enthusiastic about their roles and their communities. So make sure you check out your local library the next time you get a chance. My name is Juni Ruiz and thank you for listening.